Hello and welcome, my name is Troy Noshiko and welcome back for another lighting diagram. This time we're talking about William Mounds painting, Bar Scene. So to start off, I actually have already imported the painting into Draw.io. Draw.io is a free and open source diagramming software that I built a template for, for having filmmaking based tools to make lighting diagrams for my own projects and for these videos. If you want this template for free, it's on my Patreon and there's a link to that in the video's description. And below that are some links to some videos that kind of show you how to import it into Draw.io and import your own images for references. Um, this is a really easy way to make lighting diagrams that help you communicate with your team when you're working on a project. And I want to mention that if you like this kind of video, I have a lot of them that I've already made and a lot more coming. So definitely feel free to subscribe and give a watch to those other videos if you like this kind of lesson. So let's get started by talking about the painting itself and the lighting that we can notice in the image. So first off, as usual, we're going to talk about some shadows here. And so we can see a really distinct shadow line here. It is not a like it is not a really hard nor really dense shadow. There is a lot of light bouncing around in this room. Um, the walls appear to be kind of a whitish tannish yellow. And I think that that is just kind of bouncing that light from all directions. And that will make this shadow less dense. But we can see the direction of this, especially at the corner of the wall over here into this little hallway, you can see that shadow very clearly. So we know the direction of the light is coming left to right, you know, from the camera's perspective. We also can see that this right here is a cabinet has the edge of the light um, on the front edge, and then kind of around the corner once again is in shadow. So we definitely have a good idea of where the light's coming from and how it's coming into the room. This is kind of the back of the bar room with the left of the painting that's out of frame being where the bar itself is and then probably some windows at the front of the establishment. Now, as I said, there are a lot of light colored surfaces, both the ceiling, the wall and the floor. Um, that is going to help us have a lot of bounced light in this image and really spread it around, which is going to help us with our overall exposure. Now, there are one, two, three, four, five, six people in this image, and we want to make sure that we can see all of them. Even the person who's staying back here in the hallway, we want to make sure that we're getting enough light on them to actually see them properly. Now, notice that they aren't in the shadow line, so that does help because we can use some of that key light coming from the left side. Also, just take a moment to notice this chap right here. I think that he looks a little bit young to be inside of this bar. Now, one thing that you notice, um, and you know, you it's easier to notice when you're looking at it almost as a thumbnail size, but there is almost a actual spotlight look that goes just like that in the center of this image. That is the brightest spots, but there is sort of a vignette to the light. Now, if you're replicating this effect in camera, you can use a spotlight look, and that's pretty much what I'm going to be showing you today. But you can also use techniques like vignetting in the lens or vignetting in post to help accentuate and center the focus right in the center of the image. But that bright circle of light as a spotlight in the center of the frame helps create contrast against the dark coat, even when illuminated, of the guy who's standing in the middle of the group of people. But I just thought that was very interesting that it's easier to notice that when you're looking at it almost as a thumbnail size. So now with all of this, let's get started building our scene. Now, Idraio comes with built-in floor plan tools. So that is how we will start. So this is the general shape of the room as far as we can see it. Um, so now we need to add in some details. Now there are, uh, what did I say? Six people? Yeah, I can count. So how close are, so we're gonna make sure that, you know, they're kind of positioned similarly to how they are in the actual image. But we're gonna have those three guys there, and then we're gonna have the two people that are standing. Now, I am differentiating between the people who are sitting and the people who are standing. Um, the child is short, so I'm going to put them in the sitting category. Um, just so that when we plan our lighting and we know where people are blocking wise, it helps with, you know, making sure that we're getting everybody illuminated 
in their space that they're actually occupying. So yes, we have all six people now in our image. Now that we have an, our image set, I'm going to set my camera. In these diagrams, I don't always set the camera because to a degree, it, it's a little obvious. Um, and we're mostly talking about lighting. But in terms of this one, I'm gonna place it back here. Now this is a pretty wide shot in terms of the actual view that we're seeing. We do see from this wall all the way into the front of the space, we do see floor to ceiling. So we are working with a wider view here and we can supplement this by using a wider lens. This might be actually towards that like 24, 20 millimeter, somewhere in that range. Um, depending on exactly the kind of lens you're using, you might get more distortion. So we, I don't think we want to have distortion in a shot like this. Um, because there are just so many straight lines that are vertical and leading lines, but you could go more on the wide angle lens side while also pulling the camera back a little bit to get this type of frame because we really do wanna see that ceiling and that floor. So just in terms of what this would be used for, I would say that this could easily be a master shot as it shows the entire action of the scene. You could then move in for other types of coverage if you needed it, or let this play out in this wider master. And in terms of composition, the person that's in the center right here is at their head and shoulders, pretty much the center of the frame, um, both horizontally and vertically. Um, we do really have our attention focused on them and that is accentuated by the circle of light that is acting like a spotlight. Um, everybody else, their heads, even the person that's off in the corner, are uh, basically the halfway point for the image itself. This would be halfway. So everybody's kind of half framed. He's rising above that line, breaking it and also becoming kind of a cross composition for this image. I kind of discussed the composition and the master aspect of this because you want to have your light far enough back that we're not having it become super obvious or having it run into the shot. If you are moving in for coverage, you can change the light and manipulate it a little bit more in terms of the setup to get the exact details and the feel that you want for those individual closer in shots. But here we're lighting this as a master. So one thing also in terms of the lighting of this scene is that it's coming pretty straight across. I think that it is a window that would be at the front of the establishment, but here you can see that the ceiling is actually not as high as this back room right here. So we're not having something that's specifically like a top down light coming in. Lots of paintings we look at, we do have this kind of top down window light um, that might be from a higher window um, on the wall or covering the bottom part of the wall to get the certain type of lighting for the paintings that we look at frequently. This does not appear to be that same case. We are getting something that is a window and the light is coming almost straight across to everybody. And you can tell that also from their faces. The lighting doesn't seem to ma be making a shadow up or down on the faces in particular. Um, we do get a little contrast left to right but that's nullified a little bit by how much light is bouncing around just in the room off of these light surfaces. So to place our first light, I'm going to just go ahead and use a Fresnel. I want my key light here to be Fresnel based so that I can have not only the control of the hardness of it, but also that does make that light already into that rounded spotlight shape. So we're gonna do that and we're gonna put it right here and we are going to position this very carefully because we want to make sure that we are establishing this diagonal line right here from the shadow. And we're going to bring our light in just like this. And now as the diagram, you can clearly see how the angle is playing to make that circle of light. We're using the Fresnel to make that light source rounded and we are then able to control that hardness, but we are getting to create this shadow diagonally right across there, and it'll come right across here. Okay, so my power just went out for just a split second, and I lost my diagram. So remember kids, save early and save often. But we're back now, and the diagram does look a little bit different because I had to rebuild it. 
Um, one thing that I did add is these gray blocks to kind of demonstrate where the shadow would be where that light isn't hitting because it's being blocked by the walls. Um, and I think that's a very important part of this image. And something that I didn't discuss previously was that we do actually have a line on the ground besides this shadow line. We also kind of have a darker area here, and that's where the light would be falling off towards the right of the camera and the right of the beam as it moves further away from the subjects. And so we can kind of see that our beam comes through right about here. I think this is a relatively accurate look at how that beam could look. Now, depending exactly on the space, you might need to be a little bit closer, a little bit further away, and that will also depend on the type of lamp and the strength of the light that you are using. Now, we want to recognize that the walls here should be white or yellow, something very light. The floor is wood, and that is going to be a very light color too. So we will get a lot of bounced light in general, but I think that we will still need more. And that's because this scene doesn't have a huge amount of contrast. Really, the defining factor of this to me is that spotlight type circle at the center of this image, just right about here. And so I think that we will be getting that circle on the wall right behind our main subject based upon where we placed our light and knowing that we're using the Fresnel to make that light more spherical. Um, so now to kind of continue our lighting, we're going to place a big sheet of diffusion. Now I would say that you need this to be as big as you can manage. So if you can get a 4x4, four four, a 6x6, six six, a 12x12, 12 12, anything like that, I think that that would work best. We're going to have that just right outside of our frame here, and we're going to just pump a lot of soft light into this space trying to bring it from the key side still, but have it just absolutely bouncing every direction inside this room. If you're using a lower powered head, something like a GVM P80S, which I do really like those, um, but they are a little bit lower powered, you might need two of them going through something like this. This could also be the center diffusion part of a large five in one reflector. There are definitely cheaper ways to do huge pieces of diffusion, you will get the most control out of professional 4x4, 6x6, 12x12 diffusion. It will take a lot more grip equipment. It will take more labor power to actually use those, but you will have more control. If you're doing this on the more cheap side, you want to do something maybe like a big 5-in-1 reflector. You can get those for about 75 ish dollars, um, and that centerpiece is a really great piece of diffusion. So with this, we're going to get a much more general spread of the light. Now you'll notice that I have placed this far enough back to make it so that some of that light is not actually going to be getting into that corner there. I want this to look like it's part of that key light. Maybe there's one window at the front of the establishment that has curtains on it that's creating a softer look, and the main window that is open just has the sun pouring in, and that's why you're getting that harder light from that. It all is up to your decisions when making these. How you build the world and how you justify your lighting really depends on the story that you're telling and the equipment that you have available to you. So making those work together is a priority in my mind because you don't want to blow your entire budget on getting a huge HMI light that you don't really really need for this one scene that's going to have a lot more labor to actually set it up but you also don't want to say well it can be a chandelier inside that'll work well enough with that doesn't actually tell your story in the way that you're looking for. Now I would say that you could even have another large bounce. This once again could be a five in one reflector and you know of a six foot type dimension. And we can just put that on this side and we're trying to catch more light and just push that back in. We're trying to make sure that the job of these walls reflecting light is being done by controlling it ourselves directly. As I said before, this doesn't appear to have a top-down look to its light. So I would be less inclined to use something like a top-down lantern or a top-down octobox here, even though that would provide soft, um, mostly non-directional light, 
I just don't think it works as well as bringing more soft light in from the left side or bouncing it back into the scene from the right as if it was coming off that wall. The place where I could see some extra light being used is just on the other side of the Fresnel, um, just having one more lamp over there with something like a four x four to kind of graduate from the six by six to the Fresnel down to the four x four and kind of have it have this graduation of the light as it moves from left to right of the frame and, and the lighting setup, and then have this over here just to catch anything and bounce it back towards them. That might help soften some of the shadows, especially around the corner, but I don't think this is strictly necessary unless you need that exposure. So this is one way to do it. This is pretty professional and it would be more expensive. Now, the thing is about this setup, you can use a cheaper Fresnel or more expensive Fresnel. You can use a five in one reflector or you could use a six by six actual diffusion frame. There's different ways even in this setup to actually pull this off. I will say that if we wanna pare it down just a little bit more, we keep the bounce, we keep this Fresnel lamp over here, and then instead of having a diffusion frame here instead we use an octobox to help just bring that around a little bit more that's not going to cost you as much maybe over here instead of using two lamps you could just use one depending on the power of your lamp but this diffusion can be one of those five ohm reflectors if you don't have that you could do this once again with an octobox you just will have to change how the light looks overall. You might have to go up in your ISO or open your lens up wider and have a more open aperture to actually get this much light in here. Now that changes how you're able to focus your lens. This person might be pushed out of focus. It might be harder to follow the focus of this person as they dance. So we make these decisions when we're lighting and designing our lighting to make sure that we're not caught off guard by suddenly needing more light, having to go down an aperture, and then now having to pull focus a lot more accurately. I would say that this is actually a pretty non-depth of field oriented image. We want to be able to see that person in the back there. Maybe that person is the center of the story actually, and they watch as their friends have a party. I don't know the exact story that's going on in this painting, and how we actually not only do the lighting, but plan for those other technicals like focus and like the movement of the people and following that focus. That depends on the technical budget, the technicals that we can achieve with the budget that we have and the time and labor that we have. It's all a really big equation that we're trying to work out to make things as creative and as practical as possible. You could achieve a soft light with an octobox here. I would say, that actually doing this method would be so far more useful because of the size and the diffusion that you're gonna get off of that. Um, and if you really don't have the budget, you can use one lamp and this big piece of diffusion. It will get you softer than the soft box while also being a little bit less money. You still might have problems with how much light that you have in the scene, but you could always then move that a little bit far forward and change your frame just slightly. Um, there's definitely ways to make this work. Here, this octobox can come in just a little bit more also to bring up the light in the room. There's so many different ways we can make small tweaks to our budget. If you want the most creative control, you would use a bounce or a six by six. You would use a six by six, maybe even a 12 by 12 if you really want that soft light over here with one to two lamps. Here you'd use a four by four frame. You'd have to have two C stands for this and one C stand for this. And then you'd have to have your Fresnel and your lamp right here. Now that would be considerably more money. Rentals would definitely help that be a lot less expensive than if you were trying to buy all that equipment. But then you could also do just the five in one reflector core diffusion piece. You could do the five in one reflector over here. You could do a four by four or you could do a two by three right here, silk. And you could use something like the Aperture Fresnel. If you wanted that to be a really large, really focusable source, you could use the F10 Fresnel, or you could use the smaller Fresnel that they also have. Um, maybe if you are on the bigger budget side, that F10 Fresnel would just give you a little bit more power and a little bit more shaping to your light. 
it all depends on what you can access and the story that you're telling. Um, over here, I think this is a very reasonable, low cost alternative. If you can tolerate just a little bit more darkness in your image, either by manipulating your ISO or some other factor, or because your story allows it to have more darkness, maybe it's a little bit later in the day, you know, something like that, then you will be able to pull something off a little bit cheaper with a setup like this one. But to me, in either of these setups, the main focus visually that we're bringing from the reference image is to have this almost spotlight look on our main subject here, bringing the attention and the focus to that center of the frame combined with the composition of the image itself. So please let me know if you have any questions about this lighting diagram. If you want my filmmaker template tools, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Trenton Hoshiko and download it there. I have a link to that directly in the video's description. You can also subscribe on Patreon. I have tiers that start at just $2 and they help support not only my lighting diagram videos, but also my regular cinematography videos as well. You can also tip on Kofi or buymeacoffee.com and I have affiliate links to the types of equipment that I've been talking about today down in the video's description. All of those different things help support the videos and this channel overall so I can keep creating these types of video lessons. And if you like videos like this lighting diagram, you can subscribe for more of these and my regular cinematography videos. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have an absolutely wonderful day.